Hello and welcome to TechFunnel.com's interview series. My name is Danny White and today we have the opportunity to talk to Maya Knights. Maya is Head of Industry Insight at Eagle Eye, a leading SaaS technology company that enables businesses to create real-time connections with their customers through digital and mobile promotion solutions. With nearly 20 years of experience as a journalist, editor, and research director specializing in enterprise technology use in retail, she has spent this time reporting on the demands and challenges faced by retailers and which technologies can best support their needs in addressing ever more complex consumer expectations and behaviors. She also has comprehensive knowledge and understanding of vendor market trends. Prior to joining Eagle Eye, she was Global Technology Research Director at Planet Retail and a Senior Research Analyst with IDC Retail Insights. Welcome, Maya. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Danny. Thank you for having me on your um, your program. Thank you. Awesome. So if you could tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you're currently doing um, with your research in retail. So uh, a little bit about myself. I've been writing about retail for about 20 years. I think you covered a lot of it in your introduction, your great introduction. So thanks for that. Um, having been a journalist, um, I always say that uh, people seemed more interested in my opinion. I was a journalist for 10 years, so, and that's when I moved into research because I really wanted to understand a lot about a lot more about the, uh, the, the detail behind some of the figures that are, are, I was hearing quoted in a lot of research mm -hmm. um, and be able to, to match that to the changes in retail that I was seeing. Um, so to being able to access and design consumer surveys and retailer surveys to really get closer to what was happening was really attractive. And I've been doing that for about another 10 years. And um, having always written, been a writer, mm -hmm. um, the opportunity came up to, to write a couple of books. And, um, and, and so that's been keeping me busy for about the last year, really writing a book, um, co-writing a book on Amazon and then writing a book which has just been released all about building winning stores in a digital world. Um, and I do that with, I've done that with my co-author and CEO of the company I currently work for, which is called Eagle Eye. That's awesome. So before we get into details about your latest book, um, Omnichannel Retail, um, what does the retail landscape look like right now? What are areas of retail um, are seeing the most transformation in throughout this year and what should we expect in 2020 and beyond? There's a lot of questions there. I think the retail landscape right now, if you're a retailer, is pretty tough. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going through a lot of change. Um, evolution, not necessarily revolution. We've been seeing these changes accelerate since um, the advent of the internet and online shopping and growing and accelerate with the growing popularity of mobile devices. Um, I always say that that really boils down to uh, tracking the changes in consumer behavior in terms of how we buy, how we shop, not necessarily what we're, what we're shopping for. Mm -hmm. um, so technology really has changed the, way, the ways that we actually like to shop. Um, for, for a consumer, that's great, actually, because it means we've got a huge amount of choice mm -hmm. um, and retailers are having to work ever harder to earn our, um, our dollars as well as our repeat visits, our repeat, repeat, repeat custom and, and our loyalty. Um, and I think in that sense, when, when I think back to the things I've been doing most recently, as I discussed in your first question, mm -hmm. writing a book on Amazon really kind of, Amazon is a, is a really good example of capitalizing on the way people like to shop now. They sell everything. They don't necessarily, um, they're not necessarily specialists. Mm -hmm. So I think the final point I would make is that the retail landscape is particularly tough for retailers that are mediocre in their offering, that, that are in the middle. Um, if you're differentiated, whether it's um, on on price or on quality or luxury, you're probably in a better position to know who your customers are and serve them better 
than if you are trying to appeal to a much larger mass market. So Mm -hmm. general merchandisers and grocers are finding it tough. Obviously, Amazon's recently, um, the the, the repercussions of Amazon buying Whole Foods are still being felt. Um, But through to 2020, I think those are the areas that we're really going to see you know this this evolution continue this change um, shaped by consumer trends around mobile and um, digital continue really um, and particularly in, in, in mass categories like general merchandise and grocery. Do you think that physical stores will still be around in the next five years or would digital have overtaken them? So the good news is absolutely I think stores will be around in the next five years mm-hmm. um, My research, my experience um, uh, has proven to me that um, stores are an essential part of the shopping journey Mm -hmm. and the buying process. Uh, 90% of all sales are still completed in a store. Mm -hmm. Um, The distinction there being that they can be initiated online through reservation or purchase, but still customers like the convenience of being being able to collect in store. I think you've seen sort of the Walmart pick up towers. You've seen huge amounts of innovation with, mm-hmm. um, uh, with, with Amazon as well, pick up into to, to the trunk and so on. Mm-hmm. Um, and in Europe, we see some drive drive through pickups as well, really really popular, contributing to that to that huge proportion. Still um, showing the store is absolutely key. Um, I think digital retailers still really want to know where e-commerce is going to top out. I don't right. think anybody really knows the answer. Um, but I, I do think um, that digital has a huge role to play um, in the overall shopping journey because the store still has a huge role to play because it's still got that immediacy, that uh, try as you buy, sensory mm-hmm. experience and, and selection that mm, the internet just can't top, that digital has to play a much larger role in the store as a result. Hmm. So now to your book, you've co-authored um, this book with the, um, the CEO of Eagle Eye, Tim Mason, titled Omnichannel Retail, um, How to Build Winning Stores in a Digital World. Can you tell us a little bit about why you saw the need to write this book? Absolutely. I think I should tell you a little bit more about our CEO, okay. Tim. He, uh, he was um, marketing director at one of the still the biggest uh, grocers in the UK called Tesco. Mm -hmm. When Tesco launched um, its uh, hugely successful um, loyalty scheme called Club Mm -hmm. Card back in 1995, Mm -hmm. he actually went on to become deputy CEO of Tesco's um, until about 2012 um, and and really took the learnings from uh, launching one of the UK's largest uh, mass grocery loyalty schemes and the first one by a mass grocer mm-hmm. uh, still has 17 million members, took those learnings and have applied it to the modern age, the modern digital age, really. Um, having written the book, uh, we, we, we get, still get asked, you know, is loyalty dead? Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, applying the same question about loyalty to um, sort of your question about stores, to loyalty, um, loyalty still has a, a huge role to play. But again, we saw a gap where um, digitally enabled and, and, and data-driven retailers such as, as Amazon, because they have that online-only right. advantage, mm-hmm. were, were, were winning with customers. And actually, there was a gap there with stores and um, Tim's always maintained that today stores are digital black uh, a digital black hole really when mm-hmm. it comes to getting your mobile out and being able to use it to assist you um, in the same way as you would do so when you're sat at your desk or your your your, your laptop at home wherever it may be. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there was really a need to write this book to try and. Um, bridge the gap between what we learned about customers in the early days of loyalty schemes Mm -hmm. and what we can now learn about customers and improve to better serve customers across the entire shopping journey today um, Mm -hmm. that that we thought retailers really were missing the trick of them. Got it. So why is it vital that retailers offer a unique experience across all of these channels? It's absolutely vital because um, when you think about the significance of the store, 
actually having a, um, a, a physical sales presence mm-hmm. is something that's hugely, hugely valuable and should be leveraged much, much more from a digital perspective than we currently see retailers tending to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of retailers, traditional established retailers, have built successful businesses online, but they're not so good at joining up that experience to the store. Um, I think the easiest way of answering your question in terms of why they should do this is that uh, research has shown that um, customers that shop across more than one channel with a, with a retailer can be far more valuable than customers that shop in just a single channel. I always cite um, some very valuable research by Harvard Business Review mm-hmm. carried out in uh, 2017 because it, it's, it, it surveyed 46,000 consumers, and I think that's a, a, a huge pool to wow. draw from. And it found that um, omni-channel customers, those ch- customers that, that shop across multiple channels, mm-hmm. were worth um, up to 10% more online and 4% more per store visit. So it really pays to... One, understand that you need to appeal to customers that shop across all, all channels because I think we all tend to do that nowadays. Mm-hmm. We mix the, the store visit with the online and can purchase it you know, at any point along that journey. Um, and so to accommodate that, they should really um, improve the, the digital in-store experience as mm-hmm. well as join it up to the online one. But then they should also identify who those valuable customers are and, and actually communicate them, communicate and recognize who they are, communicate with them in store to improve the store experience and personalize the store experience even more. Mm-hmm. You write about the digital imperative um, in the book. Can you define for our audience um, what that is in terms of retailers who are aiming to connect with customers today? The digital imperative is simple. It's imperative for retailers to establish digital connections with customers. Mm-hmm. Using the example of Tesco Cupcard, who still has seventeen, which still has seventeen million um, members mm-hmm. in the UK, um, we learned that establishing connections to your customers, engaging with them, recognizing for them for their, them for their custom, and actually thanking them for that. Mm-hmm. In whichever shape, way, shape, or form you choose to, is a valuable thing because it allows you to understand and know who your customers are. Mm-hmm. The imperative is to be able to do that now digitally. Right. Um, it's so it, it, it offers such um, a, a greater source of information about your customers, to allowing retailers to form a much richer um, understanding of purchasing preferences, habits, history. And, and even things like life stages or shopping missions. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I see enough retailers using that kind of data that we uh, leave, I call them digital cues, digital breadcrumbs that we leave when we shop, much as less those that we choose to share when we're buying things online. Mm-hmm. You know, Amazon knows all these things about us by default, by right. virtue of us doing business with them online. Um, I could be your best customer online but I would still remain completely anonymous in your store Mm. Um, and I don't think that retailers really are giving uh, digital the opportunity to to bridge that gap um, to engage me in the store and say hey Maya wow you you just bought that online how about buying this in store Mm. or this is your shopping list I'm going to show you the quickest way to get get all the products and I might even sh- show you a few offers along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think anyone's saying that every shopper wants this, but for those that want to be properly engaged across all channels in a consistent way, um, the store is definitely still um, a largely untapped gap in the uh, the communication uh, uh, opportunity, I think, for, for retailers at the moment digitally. The idea of this gap leads me to my next question. How can retailers go about viewing and utilizing um, digitization as an opportunity for growth in making connections and increasing their engagement level among customers within their stores and even online? So in the book, we answer that question by by asking retailers to think about what it would take to Uberize their business. Mm. What is digitalization? 
except for the fact that when Uber um, disrupted the um, public transport industry, mm -hmm. it, it didn't own any cars. It provided the network, it provided the connection between the driver and their fare right. um, by digitizing that connection. I think um, retailers have already kind of understand and have gone some way to capitalizing um, on the advantage of being able to connect with customers digitally online mm -hmm. and building out successful e-commerce sales channels. But um, truly um, maximizing the um, capability that that enables them to engage with me on a very personal level um, and in a way that's relevant and timely and that speeds my, my store journey and makes it more convenient and actually can make it even more fun potentially because I can play, you know, I can, you can gamify the experience through an app on mobile in a store, right. for example. Um, that imperative to do that, to, to, to enrich that connection to that point as yet um, is something that, that's why we describe it as an imperative. It's something that retailers have to do. Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, Amazon and ASOS and Boohoo and all these other um, digital first companies are showing us the way online. Right. Um, retailers know how to run stores. They just need to know how to port the behavior that they're learning that we mm -hmm. like online into the, and replicate it in, in their physical environment as well. What are some of the ways you think retailers um, should look at digitally augmenting some of the physical advantages that the majority of customers uh, might be used to. For example, um, being able to walk into a store and try on something, that sensory, um, that sensory feel or emotion that we get when we go into stores, how can retailers um, augment that digitally? Well, I think retailers can, first of all, go back to basics because when we think about, you know, what drives repeat visits, what makes customers happy and keeps them coming back for more. Functional loyalty is, 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 is just as important as, as emotional loyalty. We're very used to points-based loyalty, as it were, describing loyalty in that way. But actually, if stuff just works, if the experience is good, um, or it, it, it does what it promises. Um, people will learn to trust, will, will, will naturally trust that brand. I think, right. you know, Apple on one hand, and then you've got um, Aldi and Lidl on the other when it comes to extreme ends of that kind of bargain versus, you know, complete luxury um, experience. Both work. Um, people trust those brands and they're gaining market share everywhere they go. Um, so I think getting the basics right would be a great example. To pick up on your on, on your specific example, but at, at, at the at the advanced end, I would I would say I've seen examples um, of using mobile for inspiration. Right. So um, um, either um, using um, digital signals from the clothes themselves, if there are RFID tagged, or the hangers that the, the, the clothes. Um, uh, hang on to mm -hmm. engage with interactive digital signage and show catwalks. I think Burberry has been one of the first ones to not only enable customers to be able to buy the clothes as they watch the live catwalk show, mm -hmm. but also right. to be able to access relevant clips of the catwalk show as they're near mm -hmm. um, particular collections that have been merchandised in the store on their mobile. So if it's there and I want the inspiration, that might persuade me to buy a couple more mm -hmm. items, complete yeah. the outfit. Why not? But when I say go back to basics as well, I think um, uh, another example that little you know pet peeve that I've been hearing more about are the click and collect queues at lunchtime. Why not allow a customer to book a um, a, a, a slot to collect their 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 um, purchases online so that they don't have to queue that the queues there for that for that desk aren't actually longer than the queues for for the actual checkout when because everyone nips out at lunchtime to pick up their their, their latest purchases why not allow people to try them on and then augment the fashion the fitting room experience um, so that uh, so that I can you know be shown other other options um, mm -hmm. or complementary items and finally I think also it, 
in fashion, the, re the reverse logistics issue challenge is huge. And, and we address that in the book by saying you really have to design an experience for the, the to, to incentivize the behavior you seek. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, if, if I was allowed and able to um, try, try before I buy in the store in comfort, know that I wouldn't have to queue, et cetera, et cetera, I might not buy three, three versions of the same product. <laughs> yeah. Delivered in, um, or make or make returns in store easier by um, connecting to my mobile. There's so many ways I think retailers can be a little bit more innovative about the ways that they're joining up, what we expect online, and what we what we both like and dislike about the store experience as well. Absolutely. So as we wrap up, um, I want to ask, what do you feel? What are you most excited about um, for this new era in retail? Well, I think I covered it earlier by saying I think it's a great time to be a consumer. There's huge amounts of choice. I'm mm -hmm. really, really looking forward to um, more experiences like, uh, and I hate to mention it, I'm sure everybody does, but Amazon Go. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's very particular to convenience in terms of uh, its, its return on investment and mm -hmm. the cost of technology. But I think, you know, in terms of how Amazon has applied technology to the particular convenience experience mm -hmm. I think there's a lesson to be learned there in terms of how retailers in every sector can be using technology and digital and enabling digital in, in a, in a um, via mobile in store to, to really improve and enhance the, the customer experience absolutely um we talk a lot about amazon and Am amazon is definitely probably the number one um competitor uh in this space so what do you feel is the future of retail leadership and, and who do you think will be major competitors five to 10 years down the road? Well, I think um, Amazon's definitely going to be up there, um, mm -hmm. barring any antitrust um, <laughs> moves, Absolutely. Uh, which are the unknown, of course. Um, I think we're still going to largely see a, a lot of the, 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 the larger retailers in the same places top 10 top 20 top 50 places that we see them now um i think the ones the leaders that that are going to succeed are the ones that aren't afraid to invest to to make this change in their business as we've discussed to digitize their their processes and mm -hmm. um, really improve their stores i think we're still in a, a huge test and learn phase i think you know walmart's um irl store in uh, in that, that opened recently um, is a good example of, of the ways that the biggest retailers can start to, to move the dial in this, in this area. Mm -hmm. But I also think a huge um, opportunity for smaller retailers to gain a lot of ground because they don't have that legacy. They don't have the super tank to try and turn, as it were. Um, and they don't have to try and keep the wheels going <laughs> as they try and change the tyre, right? right? So, um, uh, you know, as I said, it's exciting time to be to be. I suppose in that sense, both a consumer and maybe a smaller retailer, more nimble retailer who really knows their customers, really differentiated about the products that they sell and use their true merchant curation skills brought with um, you know, digital savvy to bear on the customer experience. They're the ones that we're going to see you know, shape things up in the future. Exciting times. Awesome. Thanks for joining us today, Maya. We really do appreciate your time and for sharing all of your insights with our audience. Um, if you don't mind, where can people find out more about Omni Channel Retail, um, purchase the book, and about Eagle Eye? So uh, you can look us up. Uh, Eagle Eye, but it's www.eagleeye.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we're Eagle Eye Solutions on LinkedIn, or we are Eagle Eye on Twitter. And of course, Omni Channel Retail is available on Amazon. It's published by Kogan Page as well. So you okay. can also buy it direct from them on koganpage.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Maya. We appreciate you stopping by um, to talk to us about um, the future of retail. Um, and congratulations on the book. Thank you so much, Danny. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Thanks for the opportunity. Awesome. Thank you. Guys, thanks for listening to this interview. For these and other interviews and topics, you can visit us at techfunnel.com. You can connect with us across social media and subscribe to our weekly newsletter so you can stay up to date on everything that's happening in the industry. Thank you. Thank you.